Hey everybody, the Bong is here, ready to give you a brand new Let's Play! Isaac and his mother lived alone in a small house on a hill. Isaac kept to himself, drawing pictures and playing with his toys as his mom watched Christian broadcasts on the television. Life was simple, and they were both happy. That was until the day Isaac's mom heard a voice from above. Your son has become corrupted by sin. He needs to be saved. I will do my best to save him, my lord, Isaac's mother replied, rushing into Isaac's room, removing all that was evil from his life. Damn no nosy upstairs neighbors. Isaac's soul is still corrupt. He needs to be cut off from all that is evil in this world and confess his sins. I will follow your instructions, Lord. I have faith in thee, Isaac's mother replied as she locked Isaac in his room away from the evils of the world. One last time, Isaac's mom heard the voice of God calling to her. You've done as I've asked. But I still question your devotion to me to prove your faith. I will ask one more thing of you. Yes, Lord, anything, Isaac's mother begged. To prove your love and devotion, I require a sacrifice. Your son, Isaac, will be this sacrifice. Go into his room and end his life as an offering to me to prove you love me above all else. Yes, Lord, she replied, grabbing a butcher's knife from the kitchen. Isaac, watching through a crack in his door, trembled in fear. Scrambling around his room to find a hiding place, he noticed a trap door to the basement hidden under his rug. Without hesitation, he flung open the hatch, just as his mother burst through his door and threw himself down into the unknown depths below. So yeah, this is The Binding of Isaac, Wrath of the Lamb Edition for the PC, and this is brought to you by GameAnyone.com. I played this game months and months ago after seeing it on YouTube, and I must say, it's been one of the best games that I've played for some time. Even though I've sucked at it at first, which usually happens when you play a new game for the first time, after a while when you get used to it, you have a lot of fun. So anyways, I've had a lot of mileage on this original file that I had, and since I'm LPing this game, I had to delete the save file, which really put a dagger in my heart, because I had all this progress. All these question marks are items you find throughout the game. Even if you don't even use them, as long as you hold them with you at least once, they're technically yours. So yeah, there are 97 secrets to find. I don't think I'm going to find every single one, but I'll give it a shot. I mean, I'm going to be playing through this game multiple times, but I'm not going to go for every single item. The most I'm going to do is unlock all the characters and beat all the uh, end pads with every character. And, you know, I'll play through it a few more times, see if I can unlock more items, and then if I don't get anything special, then I'm probably going to decide, you know what, it had its run. I'm not going to be some bald YouTuber from Canada that's going to be playing this 300 plus times, which I have a lot of respect for, by the way. It's just not going to be something I want to do. After a while, I just don't want to play it anymore and move on to other projects. So anyways, uh, we got like multiple characters you can play as, which sadly only one of them is available, and that's Isaac. Magdalene you can only unlock by collecting seven or more container hearts, which is your health. Cain can be unlocked by collecting 55 or more pennies, which is the currency in the game. Judas is unlocked by question mark, and we'll get to that in a moment. Eve is unlocked by t making two deals with the devil. Now deals with the devil will come across later on in the game, I hope. And as for Samson, you have to pass on two treasure rooms and kill Mom. So anyways, without further ado, The Binding of Isaac Wrath of the Lamb LP for my Christmas special is officially underway. 
So let's see what this first run brings. Now to move, you gotta use like Brother Wazda. Attacking is the arrow keys. Bomb is either Shift or E. At first I thought it was C, but then I see that little divot right in the middle. And item is your spacebar. Now, we don't have a spacebar item yet, but we will find one in the game, I hope. You're gonna be very hard for us to have a Binding of Isaac playthrough with no spacebar items, unless you skip them on purpose. Now, of course, uh, you playing this on the keyboard is very cumbersome for my little brain, so I had to use like a key to, uh, like a keyboard to controller emulator and have it mapped up that way. That way I'm actually playing this on the controller so that my D-pad is moved and attacking is the right analog stick. I set up the dead zone so that if I'm like moving the joystick slightly to the right, even though I'm moving up, it won't go right. That way I'll have better control of where I'm aiming. So of course the object of this game is to get to the bottom and destroy mom who's trying to destroy you. And yeah, I mean, there's going to be like uh, multiple chapters. There's two floors per chapter. In the first part, you're going to have basement or cellar. Cellar comes with Wrath of the Lamb, but without Wrath of the Lamb, you would just get the basement. Okay, so our first item is Scapular. We have been blessed. Basically, what that means is we're down to one red heart or half a red heart. We get a soul heart automatically. Now, soul hearts are actually blue hearts that add up to your total health but you cannot just replenish them unless you get more soul hearts. Over here I just went into the curse room, you take half a red heart of damage whenever you go in, unfortunately, and you're gonna find some red chests. This one has Guppy's Paw. Now Guppy's Paw, if you use it, you take away one red heart in exchange for three soul hearts. Is this a good item to use? Well, it depends. Okay, we got some pills, you gotta press Q to use them. What their effects are, we don't know, and it changes with every run. Unfortunately, that's Tears Down, which controls the, my rate of fire. The red pill, I hope is good. Bad trip, so that inflicted damage to me. Wow, what? that was a total bust. Okay, I think I should use one of my bombs to get some of these hearts. I'm really low on health. I don't want to get a game over on the very first floor, on the very first run of the very first video of this Let's Play. Now, in each floor, there are also two secret rooms. One of them is easy to find, which is the one I found now, which is usually nestled between three or four rooms adjacent to one another. The top secret room is much harder to find, as it's usually adjacent to one room. And in rare cases, two rooms. In any case, let's just go take on the first boss, which is Pin. Pin is actually a very easy boss, kind of a reference to Landmola from Zelda. It tries to furrow from the ground to leap up at you or in any random direction, and you'll have like four shots to dodge, usually from around the tail end. Its other attack is it will furrow up to shoot like some kind of green bomb at you. Be careful with that. You can also use these bomb shots against them if you're really close. But try not to get too close to Pin all the time, all the time. Otherwise, he'll pull right at you, and you'll be taking some unnecessary damage. Remember, Pin is a very easy boss, just annoying to hit because he spends half of his time underground. At least I think that's a him. I don't really know. I don't really care for the genitalia or genders of bosses, unless it's blatantly obvious. Okay, just a little bit more, Pin will be dead. Couldn't even use the bomb shots against him, but it doesn't matter. Okay, so we get Wooden Spoon, which is a speed upgrade. Ha, <laughs> look at that face. Only a face a mother can love to kill. So, what did I get for my birthday? Ah, oh, it's poop. Well, at least it gave me three flies. So yeah, every time you finish a floor, Isaac will have some kind of nightmare of like, his fate, or his childhood. And it's often very funny and tragic at the same time. Thankfully, I've never had a childhood like that. 
But anyways, I'm gonna go to the pause menu and I'm gonna show the stats. On your left, you see a boot which represents your speed. My tears is the bunch of arrows going to the right, which is sadly at one. The sword is your damage per shot. And to the far right, which is the bow and arrow, that's your range. The greater your range, the more further your shots can go, obviously. That did not need explaining, but I felt I had to explain it anyway. Now sadly, whenever you come across item rooms, they're going to be locked, and you require a key to unlock them. Basement or cellar 1 is the only floor which you will find unlocked item rooms. So make sure you find plenty of keys. Unfortunately, since every run is randomized, which does make it a lot of fun, it can determine whether you get keys or bombs or hearts or money or not. You're not always going to get the same items either, which adds to a lot of randomness and can make your runs interesting. Like sometimes you can have runs where you can use the best items and other runs where you can use the worst items. Okay, that's a soul heart right there. That actually is more than your maximum amount of health. Remember, my max amount of health is three hearts. But technically I have three and a half units of health. Whoa, oh god. That uh, big tumor head over there has a bomb attached. Don't want that blowing up right next to me, so I better keep my distance. Shoot, there we go. Otherwise, I would have taken a substantial amount of damage, and I probably still could here. Depending on how I fare in this room. I still need to find a key, though. And unfortunately, I may not even find one. So let me check this room before I go take on the boss. Luckily, if you take on the boss, I mean, you can still leave the boss room after you win, and then explore the rest of the floor. Okay, that's a self-sacrifice room. If you step on it multiple times, like on the spike, you might get a gold chest. And since I don't have any keys, what's the point? There are multiple spots where the secret room can be, so let's try... Uh, I don't know, this one first? Ooh, I got lucky! Okay, and that's another item, the shovel. We need to go deeper. Whenever you use that, you unlock a trap door, which allows you to go to the next floor automatically, should you decide to go down that trap door. Now, I don't feel like using it. I'd rather explore the long way. And I can just bomb my way into the item room, where we get telepathy for dummies. So yeah, unfortunately, that's not a good item. What it does is whenever you use it for the one front room that you use it, it makes your shots homing. Okay, so our next boss is the Widow. Let's get this fired up right now. My shots are purple and homing. I mean, they won't home right away. It's when it gets really close to an enemy that I'll start to home. So this could help out, because Widow likes to jump around and shoot out spiders or some kind of sack, which will release other spiders. Ah, that was a good hit. And of course, the... Uh, White web uh, goo will slow you. Oh my god, that spider did not even die! Oh, that was some bad hits right there. Depending on how well you do in boss battles and in floors entirely, it will determine if you get a deal with the devil or not. At this rate, I don't see myself getting one on this floor because I took some atrocious damage to Widow and that spider. I think it was that one spider that did the most damage up and now she's dead good whoa I forgot there was another spider over there health take out this little sack as soon as possible otherwise I'm gonna have more spiders to deal with hey, come on die oh radioactive spider which I believe is spider bite now usually depending on your progress in the game whether you unlock or you accomplish certain deeds you can unlock other items that'll be found in other runs of the game. Uh, what's that? Oh, there's no toilet paper! My life is ruined! Okay, so now my tears are back to normal. The item I picked up was Pageant Boy, which gives you some money whenever you pick it up. And increases the chances of you getting money being dropped whenever you finish a room. There's another thing that I forgot to mention about Scapular. And I don't think it said that in the Binding of Isaac wiki, 
but someone else in a stream that streamed this game mentioned that Scapular also increases your chances of a deal with the Angel. Now, deals with the Angel don't cost you hearts like Deal with the Devil does, but you get only one item to choose from. They're also very rare to find. A good way to get Deal with the Angels is to, well, fulfill the same requirements as a Deal with the Devil, but whenever you get a Deal with the Devil, refuse it, and you might get a Deal with the Angel. But, you know, sometimes there's a lot of randomness involved. A lot of playing with the percentages as you go along. I'm not faring too well so far. I didn't even pick up a single HP upgrade. The only stat upgrade I got is the wooden spoon, and well, speed upgrades don't really help me out that much. Maybe one speed upgrade does, but after that, you just want range, well not really range, you want tears, you want damage, you want HP, and preferably those all stat up items. You're gonna find some of those later on in the game as well, if you're lucky. But for now, let's just focus on surviving with the hand that's dealt to me. I think it's a good time to use the telepathy for dummies again. Homing tears will help out with the uh, bat flies and the greed heads. The thing I hate with the greed heads is they move around so fast, they fire two shots at once, and whenever they hit you, whether with their bodies or their shots, they take away some money from you. Which sucks, because you're gonna need that money for shops, which I haven't even accessed yet. Now remember, I STILL HAVE NO KEYS! I'm going through this whole run, on the third floor of this run, zero keys. How pathetic is that? Now believe it or not, this can happen more often than you realize. It sucks, but it can happen. Of course, I mean, I'm just not gonna go all the way to the final end in this one run, because you unlock more floors later on. You just gotta keep accomplishing certain tasks to make it happen. Or like, beat the game several times to unlock this new floor, blah blah blah. You're gonna be running into that, trust me. I don't think I'll be able to unlock Maggie this run because I only have three red hearts. And that is heartbreaking. No pun intended. Okay, let's see. Let me use a bomb here. Okay, I got one bomb back and some money. That was pretty good. Self-sacrifice room I don't care about. More money, that could help if I ever get a chance to go in the shop. So far it's not looking good at all, and that gold chest is such a tease. Careful with the red fire because it can actually shoot you after a few seconds. Alright, our next boss, the Blighted Ovum. Okay, so far, I've only had Wrath of the Lamb Floors. Cellar is the Wrath of the Lamb Floor for the basement. Catacombs is Wrath of the Lamb level for the caves. If you didn't have Wrath of the Lamb, you would just get caves. Okay, Blighted Ovum is actually a dead version of another boss you would find in the basement slash cellar called Gemini. And they're usually attached to each other. The big Blight of Ovum will try to chase you with the uh, red blood creep that'll hurt you if you step on it. The smaller version, whenever it opens its eyes, will shoot you with a blood beam as that was just demonstrated. Cat o Nine Tails increases your shot speed and it's not really that good an item. I suppose with four bombs I can check for the secret room. But sadly, I mean that's all I'm gonna get. I have no keys. You're not gonna find any keys in the secret room unfortunately just three cents, and that's it. What a bust. Ah. Oh, and there was troll bombs in that red chest, so the curse room was also a bust. <sighs> just what I needed. Things to not go my way. I could use a bomb to get that bomb, but what's the point? Oh well, this floor didn't really give me much. All it gave me was Cat on Nine Tails. It's not even that good an item. Okay, let's go to Caves or Catacombs 2. And so far, this run is falling down into the Endless Abyss. Okay, we got Caves. That's an actual Binding of Isaac level. 
Okay, I see a beggar that can also be called Judgment. So let me use a bomb here and another one here. I did want to put it too close because that can actually blow up Judgment and I don't want that. He'll take like one cent from you, but he could give you a consumable item like a bomb, a heart, or even a key. If you give him enough money that could be random, he'll give you an actual item. Like say, the ladder. This functions like Zelda 1 step ladder, gives you like a one space gap you can just walk over. That's pretty good if you want to dodge certain attacks or pick up items that are within some kind of small chasm. So that was a pretty good pickup. Now if only I could just get a key! You'll have some runs where you'll be getting plenty of bombs but no keys, or runs with plenty of keys but no bombs, or worst case scenario, you get runs with no keys and no bombs! Very, very rare. I don't think it's ever happened, but if it does, it's probably because you died within the first three minutes of the game. Which is more legit, if you ask me. Okay, over to the left, when you look on the map, you see that sword dipped in blood? That's called the Boss Trap Room. Or at least that's its nickname. You can only enter it if you have, like, a one red heart remaining. So right now, we can't enter it. The Arcade Room costs you, like, one penny to enter. And you have a slot machine that can give you some good items. The shell game, which gives you like certain items and gives you like a 33% chance of success, and the rest of it is failure. The blood bank is actually very useful. Whenever you give up one half a red heart, you would get some money. And I think this is a good chance for me to test out the boss trap room. So I can. Oops, I didn't want to pick up that penny, or that red heart for that matter. Okay, so. Because I put in enough red hearts, again, this is random, I got the IV bag. This is a portable blood bank. You can get another item in the blood bank machines called the blood bag, which gives you an HP upgrade, and it also gives you a speed upgrade. Sadly, I did not get that. You're either going to get that or the portable IV bag. I mean, the portable IV bag is okay in its own right if you want the money and got plenty of red hearts, but right now it's just not useful. An HP upgrade, yeah, we're eating dog food, is very valuable. You'll find lots of stat upgrades in boss trap rooms. You're more likely to find a stat upgrade, what I mean to say, whether it's HP or pretty much anything else. So remember, this is a boss trap room, meaning once you pick up the item, you have to take on bosses. In this case, it's Monstro. I mean, he's pretty easy. All he does is just hop around, leave a lot of blood balls hanging around. Whenever he opens his mouth like that, he's gonna shoot like a little blood ball spray. So be careful with that. Well, the real word is not blood balls, it's just shots, but it looks like balls of blood. So you know what I'm getting at. That Tears Down pill is starting to bite a lot. Which sucks. Now we got Larry Juniors. Remember, Larry Jr. is a reference to Super Meat Boy, where the boss in one of the chapters was Larry Sr. So yeah, Larry Jr. likes to crawl around either horizontally or vertically. And may shoot out a little bit of poop now and then. Poop is okay because it doesn't hurt you and can actually hide certain items if you shoot it off. But the poop can also block you for a bit, even block your shots. So in a way, Larry Jr. pooping is a bit of a defensive mechanism. Okay, come on, Larry. That's one Larry Jr. dead, two Larry Juniors, and now three Larry Juniors dead, and we got our first key! Wow! Four floors, and I'm only now just getting one key. Okay, let's see. Uh, I think this is a bit cutting it close for using that bomb. If I play it right, I won't blow up the beggar. And I did, but yeah, I get one key out of it. So in a way, it paid out. Just that I missed out on another item. But that's okay. I mean, you're gonna make mistakes from time to time. 
Just as long as not everyone gets anal over one little mistake and all of a sudden their day is ruined. The good thing about that little silkworm is the red one was a champion, and whenever you kill them they may drop a consumable item. In that case, the red silkworm dropped a key. Okay, here's another thing that's interesting. It's called an Eternal Heart. If you fill up an Eternal Heart, you'll get an HP upgrade. To fill up an Eternal Heart, it's one or two ways. One is to actually find another Eternal Heart within that same floor. The other way is to hold on to this half all the way to, like, the beginning of the next floor. And then it'll fill up automatically. You're more likely going to do it through Method 2. Trust me on this one. Okay, the thing about these skull turrets, I'm not calling them by their real names because I don't remember the names of every single enemy in case anyone has an aneurysm over it. And anybody that does get some medical help and psychiatric help right away is that you have to approach them ever so gingerly but don't shoot at them when they're down because it's not going to work. They're not going to come back up. You have to wait for them to pop up on their own and then shoot them. I think I can use one of my three keys to see the shop. Okay, so here's what we get. We get five cents for a soul heart. I'll take that. Seven cents for a notched axe. Hmm. Now, I'll be picking up notched axe for the first time, but I'm likely going to see it in uh, other runs. And it's not worth spending seven cents. What notched axe does is that when you hold it up against a rock and then aim it, It'll destroy the rock. But I got bombs for that, so what's the point? Well, I only got one bomb left. And I'd rather telepathy for dummies than a notched axe. I mean, notched axe is not really an offensive item. Telepathy for dummies, however, is. Okay, let's deal with these shooting silk ones, shall we? One of them's a champion. Can you guess which one it is? Okay, it's this one over here, the bigger one that's also colored. You know, just in case you couldn't figure it out. But I'm sure all of you did. I hope. Okay, I think... Th oh, that was bad. Because I used up the item, I froze. These floating heads can be very annoying because they love to shoot whenever they can. The green one, however, their shots are bigger and will do one whole red heart of damage. I gotta hold on to this soul heart, as well as the eternal heart. Remember, the soul heart is actually saving me from losing the eternal heart. Because once you take like one red heart worth of damage, or one half a red heart of damage, the eternal heart's gone. Remember, the eternal heart right now is serving as a red heart. Half a red heart. Ooh, tarot card. Well, this is not really a tarot card. Some of these are called bicycle cards. And two of hearts actually doubles my red heart, so now I'm at full health. Rusted key, I think, increases your chances of getting key drops. Maybe it has something to do with gold chests as well, but for now, it's the only trinket I got. Trinkets are used automatically. They're kind of like accessories in RPGs. So keep that in mind. You can only hold one at a time, unfortunately. But there is an item that can allow you to hold two. Okay, so now let's see what's in this item room, shall we? Dead Sea Scrolls? I mean, it's okay, but there's a lot of randomness to it. Okay, that gives me the game kid. What Dead Sea Scrolls does is it takes the role of one random spacebar item, even ones you don't have unlocked yet. Now this could be good in, say, the game kid's case, where it kills enemies and it drains their health. Or in bad cases, like an item, say, Kamikaze, which serves as a bomb, but hurts you. It's like a bomb strapped to yourself, so to speak. So you could be hurting yourself, maybe even killing yourself, by using Dead Sea Scrolls. Not a worthy item to take long term. Maybe if you wanted to challenge yourself, you can do that. But since I picked it up at least once, it'll show up in my collection, even though I don't have it with me still. Remember, for an item to show up in your collection, you have to at least pick it up once. Okay, 
these little meat wads can be annoying, but they only shoot in the four cardinal directions. I just gotta get my shots at the right time, otherwise I'll end up getting hit myself. There we go. Just spread it out now and then. Perfect. Okay, let me get over here where it's safe. I'll have a greater chance of hitting them. Take a while... Never mind. Okay, I'm gonna check out that other room later, but for now, let's take on the boss. Fistula! Okay, Fistula is quite easy. It reminds me of Marching Mild from Yoshi's Island, where it's one big entity, and after enough damage, it splits into smaller entities, and whenever you destroy that, it splits into even smaller entities. And the smallest form is a s standard silk one. So your main strategy should be to take care of the smaller bits at a time, then focus on the bigger ones. Otherwise, you're just going to be overwhelmed and nobody wants that. Well, except for Fistula. But I don't think game AI has feelings! Oh, that was close! Remember, I can take, like, only one more hit, and that it, that eternal heart could be at stake. Whoa. Pro dodging! These silkworms like to charge at you, so be very careful. Oh, that was bad. Terrible dodging on my part. I put myself in practically an unwinnable situation. Well, for avoiding damage, that is. So now we only got these little bits of fistula left. One more Fistula Nugget, and we will be done. Take out one last Silkworm. Come on. Die. Die. Perfect. We got Spelunker for at least clearing the, uh... Spelunker, I think, is for clearing at least caves or catacombs. Okay, so we get Mom's Coin Purse, which gives random pills. Bad Trip, and... Tears down. These are the worst pills I can get right now. So I'm not going to pick those up. But I will pick up a deal with the devil. What items can I get? Three soul hearts for a technology, which I can't take. And two red hearts for nine lives, aka dead cat. If I take this, I'll be down to one red heart due to dead cat's ability. But I can die nine times before the game's over. I think that'll also cost me my eternal heart as well, so I don't want to take that. So this will not be the run where I unlock Eve. Ah, look at your little, little, little peener. It's a, like a little nugget. Okay, so now we're at the depths. Well, technically this is Necropolis. Necropolis is the Wrath of the Lamb version of the depths. And it's pretty rough. Trust me on this one. I don't want to use that one key for a chest. I'd rather look for the item room first. Let me deal with the fire before dealing with the spiders. Actually, I can deal with the spiders here. They can't come my way now. I've given myself a little safe haven. Oh my god, they actually went through the gap! Oh, shit. Well, at least I still got the uh, HP upgrade from the Eternal Heart. So now I'm at five hearts. Yeah, I gotta be very careful, because I got lots of small spiders to deal with. They can actually walk onto the spikes, too, which is very stupid. It's good to know they can hurt themselves doing it. I don't, just don't know why they would walk onto spikes. But anyways, I'm not going to complain if it makes my life any easier. Okay, these uh, enemies are called Vis's, like V-I-S. Well, these are actually the upgraded versions of them. I can shoot the blood beams in both directions. I mean, it looks very gross, trust me. It looks like a woman having a period and raging hemorrhoids at the same time. Not a very nasty visage to have. Or mental image for that matter. So far I'm doing okay. Uh oh, super troll bombs! Okay, these are my least favorite enemies, the Mask and Heart Duo. To destroy a mask, you have to destroy its corresponding heart. 
the Mega Troll Bombs home in on you, and they can hurt, so be careful with that. Unfortunately, I could not dodge them due to the layout and having masks and hearts to deal with. Masks, unfortunately, are invincible, except for maybe Troll Bombs. Or other certain methods, but you would have to take out the hearts anyway. Okay, there we go. Let's see, what is this tier? I mean, what is this pill? Give me a good effect. Full health, awesome. I'm gonna leave that tears down pill behind. Because it's not gonna help me in any way. Oh, once again, I use an item and actually puts me in a bad spot. Go for the fat flies, homing tears. At least they don't regenerate. Sadly, this floating enemy over here that looks like Zordon had his eyes peeled out tends to regenerate flies at you. Father flies, regular flies, even fat flies can come out. Gotta get rid of them there. That can make my life a little bit easier on this room. But he's only got like one key, so I have to choose between the item room or the shop. I'm pretty much gonna go for the item room. I usually do that. I give item room top priority over the shop. Get this bomb fly, I'm gonna keep my distance from it. There we go. And let's see what this item is. Uh, this looks good. Growth hormones, speed, and damage. So my tears grow a little bit and can do more damage than normal. Right now my damage level is 4, which is great. Also, I can move a bit faster and it looks like I have a splitting headache. I mean, that's a cool thing about Binding of Isaac is when you pick up items, your appearance changes. I know, it's only now I'm mentioning it, but right now, I'm more focused on dealing with this headless horseman helmet. It has like three atta I mean, two attacks. One of them is to- oh god, that was bad. Is to shoot three, three shots at you, and then dash multiple times. Sadly, these uh, turrets over here in the corners, I cannot kill. I just have to dodge them. This guy's almost dead. Good shot should do it. There. Okay, there's another judgment called Demon Judgment. And that actually takes your health. But you can actually get deal with the devil items from this guy. You know, I'm willing to give him a shot. But not yet. I'd rather wait until I have more red hearts lying around to work with. Oh, I don't like this one at all. Ugh. Ah! Damn, that was a bad shot. Uh, and neutral flies after me! Did I shoot out the poop? I don't think so. Yeah, I think I probably did. No, I didn't! There's those red knobs! Fine, I'll just use the telepathy for dummies. A little too late, but... Oh, great, now they're all on one side. A bit too late, if you ask me. I'm taking some pretty terrible damage. And now it looks like Demon Judgment is... Probably going to be an afterthought. Unless I get lucky in the later rooms. So I better hope to find something good. Oh god, spike cubes or spike blocks. Just gotta be careful with them. But this guy can actually kill himself on these things as well, which is great. Pass them. Oh god. Yep, yeah, I better use this again. Yeah! I had no way to dodge that! This is a bad room, too. Ugh. I don't know how I avoided damage there. Okay, are any of my shots even bringing these guys close to death? Okay, there we go. That takes care of the double vis. Perfect. Now it's just these greed heads. I got lots of money, but no, hardly any bombs and no keys. Something's wrong here! And it's not my performance! Well, actually, my performance has a lot to do with it, but you know what I mean. Oh, come on! Are you just gonna give me every bad room there is in part one of this LP? Because if so, this is gonna be a sign of things to come. 
mean, I've beaten, like, uh, this game multiple times. I don't think my performance is gonna take that big of a step back, is it? It's because I'm using commentary. That probably has a lot to deal with it. Okay, these, uh, chub flashers can be a bit of a problem as well, especially since there's lots of them. And they can take quite a bit of hits before they die. They have a nice chunk of range, too. I mean, they can go over rocks. Well, ah! Their shots can, at least. Right now, we whittle them down. Was there six or was it five? Well, it doesn't matter now, because there's only two left. One left now. So keep my distance, get the shots now and then. Perfect. Oh, we got ourselves another key. Eh, let's take on the boss now. Ooh, the Fallen! Okay, this is an interesting boss. This ginger bite is their demon. Okay, he has like a multi a myriad of attacks. In this case, he's gonna try to dash right into me. Whenever he stops, multiple blood beans will come from him. So his first wave is usually like the three shot and then the four shot. One after the other. Whenever he growls, you'll know he's coming for ya. You got good speed, you're likely going to outrun him every time. If not, you might have to come up with something to block him. Now he splits into two. This could be a problem if you don't know how to parse random things. Oh, God. Oh, come on! Man, I'm just not getting good dodging here. Right now they're both chasing me. Well, that actually works. Just had to wait for one to use the blood beams. Ah! Okay, now it's the other one. Okay, one should be close to death. Oh, that was a bad hit. So, uh, likely not going to be using Demon Judgment, eh? Unless I get a full health right away. Probably from a pill. Okay, so what's our deal with the Devil Item Ouija Board? So Spectral Tears are good because they can shoot through rocks and hit enemies from behind them and that was the phone timeout. Okay, I'm back. I just had to take a phone call, but anyways, let's not worry about that yet. I still don't think I should go for Demon Judgment. I should check out over here, see if I can find anything special. Maybe if I'm lucky, I'll find the top secret room by this little green knob enemy by mistake. Now the thing about Spectral Tears is that while it can shoot through rocks hitting enemies from behind them, shooting on fire or poop actually requires a bit more shots because they pass right through. That's one minor issue. I think I can go back to the shop. I mean, let's just hope that Greed's not there. Greed is one of the seven deadly sins and is a mid-boss, so to speak. He sometimes appears in shops, especially if you got a lot of money. Yeah, see, this is requiring a lot more shots to take out. Okay, I want to buy the battery for 15 cents. It makes items recharge faster. Buy the soul heart, and I'm going to buy the red heart as well. I still don't want to pick up that pill, of course. Now, do I want to use my last key here? Why not? I get some money and another half a red heart. Maybe now I can give Demon Judgment a try. Let's see if he pays out right away. And... Yeah, maybe? Is this a good pill? Friends till the end? Not really that great. I think I'm just going to use my last bomb to check for the secret room. Oh, I got lucky. Oh, there's Greed. So yeah, he's a bit annoying because he... Oh, wow. Playing like I play Space Invaders. Every time he hits you, he can take some money. And he summons these leapers. <gasps> Did it again! Damn it, Greed. Thanks to my battery, Telepathy for Dummies is charging a little bit all by itself. I mean, I could just leave the secret room right now and cut my losses and move on. But I... Oh, am I going to get hit by every single shot now? Because I'm doing really bad so far. But I figured if I killed Greed, maybe he would have dropped an item like Steam Sale. But he did give me a lot of money, which is nice. But I only got one more shop to check out. 
Because this is the last floor of this run. Uh, you... Why does she keep laughing at your little wiener like that? She's already seen it. More action than one other girls get on oh, late. It's the other way around. Okay, now we're at the depths too. And the boss here is Mom. Once I win here, that's the end of the run. And then you unlock another chapter. So if I start the next chapter, I mean the next run, it's going to be a little bit longer. Let me take out these guts. Hopefully I get some more red hearts, because I spent way too much on Demon Judgment. And even more getting hit by Greed. The Joker? Eh, that'll take me to a deal with the devil automatically, so let's take it. Okay, so I got five red hearts to choose from. I mean, five red hearts to give up. And I can choose between Brimstone, which allows me to shoot blood beams myself. Or I can take the Pact, which increases the amount of damage I do, and it gives me some soul hearts. So my stats are like 5, 1, 4, and 2. So I give up two red hearts and gain two soul hearts by the pack special ability. Okay, 5, 3, 5, 2. I think my tears went up as well, or was that always up? Well, it doesn't matter, because now I can deal more damage. That's all that matters to me. Okay, so here's some enemies you'll see in the depths called Knights. They can also be called zombies because, well, they got brains and they just move in one direction for a little bit. They're practically lifeless, so to speak, like zombies. But the real names are knights. Don't expect me to call every enemy by their real name because I'm going to be first to memorize them all. I'm just going to go with what nicknames I got for them. Some of them I'll use the real names. The ones that are easy to memorize. Whoops. Careful. The yeah, gray ones have a life of their own. I mean the spike blocks, I mean to say. Come on. Pop up! Thank you. Okay, so I picked up a bomb. Like a lowly bomb. Like that's gonna help me. And angel fetuses are very annoying because they like to shoot you, and they teleport. Worst case scenario, they can actually teleport on top of you. But believe it or not, you can actually track their essence from where they appear. Like you see that little swirl, right at the very last second they materialize? That's where they're gonna go. Oh, I get a key. So I can open that item or- oh, this does not look like a good spot. Okay, just get out of the sides. We'll get at least one killed. That'll help me out a oh, substantial bit. Okay, two are dead. Careful. Well, they're not really called angel fetuses. They're just called fetuses. But they actually have a much stronger form with angel wings. That's why I called them angel fetuses at the time. Unfortunately, the angel fetuses shoot three shots at once. Has a chain reaction, chain reaction with these bomb flies. Get rid of multiple ones at once. There. Uh, I don't like this room either. Just so much uh, pit. Okay, now I'm in a good spot. So I have an easier shot at taking care of these fly shooters. There we go just a little bit more. Some say brimstone is a really good item. Me, not so much. I mean, it's okay in earlier floors, but in later floors, Brimstone will not be doing enough damage as you would need to survive. So there's the boss room right now. Let me take care of these super leapers, which can be very annoying to hit. I mean, I should be using telepathy for dummies, but I'd rather save that for mom. So be very careful. Once you take out some of them at a time, it gets a lot easier. That was a champion, get red heart, and a bomb. So let me look around, see where the item room is too. Remember, this is gonna be the last item room of this run. Oh, we gotta take on Chubb, which is really a boss in caves or catacombs. Usually at this point, you'll run into regular bosses as mid-bosses. 
Chomp also has a weakness to bombs, like Dodongo from Zelda. But since I only have four bombs, I can't really use too many. It's usually when he opens his mouth to, or she opens her mouth to lunge at you, is when you want to fire the bomb. Yes, I can confirm that Chubb is a female. Because it births silkworms. And it also has a posthumous version called the Carrion Queen. A very tough boss. And not super tough, but annoying if anything else. Just a little bit more. Perfect. Our last item is Halo of Flies. This actually gives me some defense from shots. Well, like regular shots, like the shots I'm shooting right now. Lasers or physical attacks likely will still hurt me. Actually, they will still hurt me. Ow, why did I walk on the spikes like a moron? So that cost me a soul heart right there. Sucks. There's our last shop. Take out the little fetuses. There we go. Perfect. Oh, we got a key! Nice party gift. Fortune tellers can give you soul hearts or fortunes, which are virtually worthless. And they can also give you trinkets. Play it enough times till it des destroys itself, and you'll get a crystal ball. Now let's see if we'll actually get a crystal ball. Now you might be lucky to get a crystal ball. Sometimes when it implodes, it just leaves you with perishable items. Okay, the stars takes you to the item room automatically. If there's a floor with no item room, which will happen, you will just be teleported to a random room. I don't like this at all, the soul hearts right there on the spikes. And I have no flying items to pick it up. So let me keep playing this a few more times. I think that's enough for now, let me check out the shop. Okay, Mom's Purse is a pretty good item to have, because now I can carry multiple trinkets. Well, up to two. And I'll take this tarot card as well, which is strength. I mean, this card of the stars is useless. So if I take the strength, it'll help me out against Mom. And I only got three cents left. That's okay. Oh, another tarot card. And it's the Hermit. The Hermit just warps you to the shop. So, the best way to avoid damage from the spikes is if I use a bomb to knock the soul heart well, over there. Ah, to more spikes! <laughs> okay, never mind, I just winged it. That would have been so dumb to get it off the spikes, and it lands on even more spikes, and I use a bomb there, and it lands on even more spikes. Oh, there's the arcade room! And I hate these guys so much, because it's so easy to get hit. Because they stretch your necks out so fast. It's just so sudden, you have no time to react. Okay, that was my fault there. I'll just walk right into the actual enemy. There we go. I can still check out the shop. Question is, was it worth it? No. And I don't really feel like playing the blood bank or blowing up the slot machines. Still gonna do a little bit more exploring before- I Oh, yeah, I put myself in another unwinnable situation. Man, my dodging is just getting terrible. I think whenever you do commentary, like the LP is cursed, you just do substantially worse than what you would do casually. It's just, it happens no matter what game you play. It makes no sense. I mean, when I did a practice run, of, like, my deleted save file, which for some reason would not finish recording because of some kind of glitch, I had better items than this! And I had better stats as well! I don't want to go to the curse room because that will cost me my soul heart. I can only take, like, very few hits and mom would kill me. Okay, take out these little blast assist fetuses over there. They're pretty easy. They don't attack. That's good. Come on, die now. Perfect. Ah, oh, free bomb. Don't mind if I do. 
gives me a soul heart and two cents. Two cents I don't really care about. But I could check for the secret room over here. Yes, got it. Ooh, that was actually a very good item to find. Raw liver gives me an HP upgrade. Not enough to uh, get Maggie, though. So that's a bit unfortunate, but that's okay. At least we got ourselves a stat upgrade, which will really help out for the final battle of this run. Not really the final battle of the game, that's not even close. Okay, Mrs. Cankles, it's time to battle. Tell up with you dummies. Your strength card, so I get like one extra heart and extra damage for this one. Oh, oh god. Good thing I still have an extra bomb, because I see another thing that'll be a staple in this game called a tinted rock. I can blow it up myself or I'll just let mom do the damage for me. Mom likes to spawn spawn enemies out of her orifices, so be very careful with that. Don't stand right next to the door for a substantial period of time because the hand will hurt you. Oh, a small rock has appeared. So by blowing up a tinted rock or just as many rock, regular rocks, I get another item that can be collected. I'll just blow up the tinted rock myself. Oh no! Wait, mom destroyed it for me. Just watch out for the foot because that does one full red heart of damage compared to other attacks. Okay, the homing tears are not really working because they're homing in on orifices that are closed. Don't do that, tears. Remember, it's the only the ones that are open that you can actually target. So be sure to watch out for the enemies as well. If mom destroys some of these rocks, it'll make dodge easier as well. Okay, Mom's almost dead. I just need a little bit more damage. Just a few more hits in the right spot. That's it. Got her! Isaac was cornered. His mother, fueled with the desire to serve her god, was bearing down on Isaac. I will do as I am told, my lord. I love you above all else, Isaac's mother repeated to herself. This was the end of the line for Isaac. His mother was far too strong for him. But just as he accepted his fate, God intervened, sending an angel down from above to stop his mother's hand. And just like that, it was over. Or is it? So yeah, that's one run of The Binding of Isaac, Wrath of the Lamb that actually turned out successful. At first, I thought there was little hope due to the amount of damage I was taking around midway because of greed and some damage from the Fallen as well, but I survived. So yeah, these are some of the enemies you've come across. This is not the full credits, by the way, because we didn't go through the full game. Yet, at least. But we will soon enough. I'm just going to show off the secrets that I did unlock as a result of all this success. So yeah, these are some of the bosses you can fight. Peep is a bit annoying. You'll run into her soon enough. Kind <laughs> Loki was Mr. Cool. Alright, so after these credits roll through, let me show you the secrets I got. So we got 6 out of 97 secrets, not bad. That's not officially a mom kill because there's another phase of mom we gotta deal with later on that we just unlocked. So we got a cube of meat and that also results in the harbingers being unlocked. These are new bosses that represent the four horsemen of the apocalypse. Famine, pestilence, war, and death. So we got the womb which is chapter 4. Yes, we're actually going inside Mom, the small rock, Spelunker, and Radioactive Spider. Spelunker is really the Spelunker hat, which is another item you can use. And well, that's pretty much it. 6 out of 97 secrets in one run. Not bad. Not bad at all. Alright, I'm going to stop the video here, and in the next episode, we're going to do ourselves another run. Hopefully, we'll unlock a character and see how we fare in the womb. Goodbye, everyone. Thanks for watching.